shifting your paradigm, shifting your paradigm. The lady on the scene, Celine Salon. The salon de Celine, the lady on the scene. You know what I mean? The lady on the scene, Celine Salon. Celine Salon. Hello and welcome to our first Celine Salon YouTube channel show. Hooray! We've done it. And we have a wonderful show for you this evening with some fantastic writers. But before I introduce our lineup, um, I want to say hello to all our followers and hello to all our newcomers. And all we ask is for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, for you to like it. And if there's acts that you like, why don't you add a comment? Anyway, let me give you a brief history of Celine Salon. Celine Salon began in 2015 at the Society Club, a small bookshop on Silver Place in Soho, where we started off very small with a few writers from poets, authors, comics, songwriters, uh, storytellers. Um, and each month, we, as we still do, our format as a theme, everybody brings a five minute piece to the table and performs. And we have carried that on and on and on. From the Society Club, we moved to the Mediterranean Cafe, where we grew even bigger, to our current wonderful venue, Jerry's Club on Dean Street, which we hope we will be back soon with live performances. So the YouTube channel is there for um, emerging and established writers to bring their pieces of work to you and to be able to watch from home comfortably with a glass of wine or a cup of tea, whatever you fancy. Um, any, uh, if any, you know, if any writers I'm asking you out now that if you'd like to come and submit something, you can find us on Facebook um, at Celine Salon. You can submit a five minute audio, uh, sorry, a five minute video piece and we can add it to our next show. Um, and basically, yes, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Celine Salon. Okay, with, oh, hold on a minute. Oh, feeling a bit strange. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sheila Blade, and I'm a conspiriologist, dreamologist, and, um, I just want you to be aware that Celine has been abducted by aliens. Hold on a second, there's an ESP coming through. <laughs> yes, she is being probed by aliens as we speak. Now, you may wonder how I became a conspiriologist. Well, it's very simple. I was invited to a fetish night at the Natural History Museum where I decided to dress up as a rubber lizard. Tongue intact and shiny, I wandered onto the dance floor. And who should I bump into but David Icke? <laughs> and need I say no more? Yes, I ended up home with him. And when I woke up, I realised the world was flat. <laughs> oh, thanks, Sheila Blade. <laughs> bit peculiar. Conspiriologist, dreamologist, <gasps> which reminds me, our theme for Celine Salon is dreams. And without further ado, let me introduce our lineup for this evening. We have one voice, one cello, and a mad Belgian. We have Aidan Cassily, Sebastian and the Dream. We've got Tom McCall, hip hip hooray. We have Mother Posteria. We have Andre Anastasis McFarlane, and that's a mouthful, but I bloody well did it. Ha <laughs> ha. Maybe it was that little shot of rum earlier. We have Claire Nicholson. Ha. Huh. Hello, Claire. Talented musician. And hello, Pedro Hedro de la Pedro. Pedro de la Hedro. Um, a very belated happy birthday to you from all of us at Celine Salon. Um, she will be doing an amazing song for us. We also have Salon regular Barney Ashton Bullock. We have Amina Jindani, all the way from Malaysia. And we have Soho regular Lucy Tertia George. Salon, 
And now, let's begin the show. As I said, our theme is dreams. And we have the wonderful one voice, one cello, and a mad Belgian with Whiskey Joe. Um, so, yeah, a, few, a couple of years ago, I had this dream about being in an underground London bar, you know, back in the day when we could go to small, crowded London bars late at night. Um, and I, I was meeting this, well, I, I was meeting interesting people, as you normally do in those places. And there's one guy at my table in the dream who was paying with eight pound notes. And in my dream, I was being very logical and saying, what are you doing? What are these eight pound notes? And what's, what's the story? And he said, oh yeah, you can get them over there for a tenner. And they, and they work everywhere in London. I was, I was going, no, that's a bit silly. And he was explaining, no, no, look, they're so beautiful, these eight pound notes, that they, were, they bring more colors to life, so they're totally worth the, the two pound loss. And so I told Rupert that story, and he wrote a song. And he said, who did, this guy, what did he look like? He looked a bit like my friend Whiskey Mick, so he called it Whiskey Joe and the eight pound note. Cycling down the road It's like a sort of habit, I suppose He asked me for a drink or two But when he went to pay Then I had a blackout Then I had a blackout Vision is the enemy of art, he said to me Dedication puts you in a hole So let's hit the town and spread around this town And then you see What's lurking in the deepest, darkest corners Of the bottom of your soul Whiskey Eight pound notes, as colourful as anecdotes. He's a man, and you need him to be. Everybody takes him very strange. He doesn't care about his two pound change. He's a man, and you need him to be. If you wanna be free. These lovely multicolored eight pound notes You can buy them for a tenner Is what he explained to me Then I had a blackout Then I had a blackout The two pounds change is worth it For the pleasure that they bring And everyone accepts them with a smile A little elbow grease Will make this little world go round I like to hang around his world a while Whiskey Joe and his eight pound notes It's colourful as his anecdotes He's the man that you need him to be Everybody takes him very strange He doesn't care about his two-pound change He's the man that you need him to be If you want to be free If you want to be free
Thank you. Thank you. Well, that song was about a dream. I had a weird dream the other night. I dreamt I turned into Keith Richards. <laughs> Let's not go there. Anyway, moving on swiftly. Salon newcomer, we have Aidan Cassidy, Sebastian and the Dream with I Once Had Dreams. I once had dreams, vivid, strong, and beautifully real. Touching them beguiled my very existence. Holding them close made this dense world seem brittle with simplicity. I once had pain, the likes of which few experience. The kind of pain that builds storms, moors ships, and distresses the weak. That wrecker of worlds in distant places came to place wrath on my shoulders. But I didn't fall. I didn't fail. Faltering was far from my perception. Simply put, I met you. Or should I explain, you were offered to me by the gods, by chance or by luck. Yet it happened, a tiny yet significant miracle landed in the palm of my hand, small and sleeping like a baby bird without a mother, serene, whether by action alone or by controlled persistence, I had arrived home. Home is such a small word yet a powerful one when it arrives complete. These steps that were taken then, not over broken glass or smooth terrain, but merely by placing one foot in front of the other, brought us together. My heart could rest in the home of your heart, a place of worshippers and dreams a perfectly simple place to express my inner machine. My sweet and tolerant world of love. I remain there now. I begin to move one muscle at a time. And one future day, I may offer this hope to others. To those who can love as I loved. As you loved me, I once had dreams. And that was Aidan Cassidy and Sebastian and the Dream. Thank you, Aidan. We hope to see more of you on both YouTube and our live shows. Dreams are funny, aren't they? I hate those ones where you dream of finding £50 notes and you wake up and they're no longer there, especially through lockdown. Anyway, lovely regular and one of my favourite poets. Please let me introduce Tom McColl with No Longer Quite So Sure. No Longer Quite So Sure. The council is yet to cut back the branches of the trees on Newman Road, which means that halfway through my journey to work on the bus, and always just as I fall asleep in my usual seat on the upper deck, with my hooded head at rest against the glass, the low-hanging branches attack me in the dream I'm having, and I'm caught out every time, for I'm always so tired, and in any event, I guess I'm helpless, being one of those hundreds of thousands of people always letting themselves be eaten and then spewed out by any one of hundreds of number branded hairless bison that charge across the city in all directions every day. We are all living lives more and more unnatural and in this messed up world where buses are bison and people are grass it's no longer shocking to find that glasses, air and branches are blades. 
At any rate, what happens each time is that the jutting branches the bison headbutts immediately return to wreck revenge, and on giving my window the coarsest caress invade the dream I'm having like they're the bladed fingers of Freddy Krueger scoring my brain, and in shock but just in time I wake up, my brain unbloodied but my mind unhinged. Today is no exception, I'm violently awoken, but this time round, just after it's happened, and I glance at the section of window where my head's been resting, I notice a message etched in the glass, we're going to take the city back, which in the past I'd have automatically assumed was done by some school kid, by locker key or compass from his pencil case. But now, as the bus passes the derelict factory on Leonard Street, and I can see that already poking through the smashed windows are branches of small trees, I'm no longer quite so sure. Thank you, Tom McCall. What a lovely piece of work. Now, last summer, we put together a comic monologue workshop where we had six participants, one of them being a lovely lady by the name of Maria Maz. And all I can say is it's so lovely to see somebody come in and watch their progress. And uh, without further ado, <laughs> I must introduce to you Mother Posterior and her dream surgery. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream, make it the weirdest that I've ever seen. Maybe a fish driving a Land Rover, stopping at McDonald's, then my dream is over, Mr. Sandman. Hello and welcome to the first edition of Mother Posterior's Dream Surgery. This is where you can send in your weirdest and wonderfulest dreams and I analyse them with a little bit of help from him upstairs. Right now I've been sent lots of emails this time so I'm going to go through a few of them and we're going to analyse them. Let's have a look who we got first. Right, the first one is from Linda in Chiselhurst. Now, Linda says, Last night I had the most traumatic dream. Oh, Linda. I dreamed I was incarcerated in a psychiatric hospital, strapped to my bed in a padded cell. Then suddenly, someone appeared in my room and it was my bastard of an ex-husband. Oh, no. But his eyes, they were white like zombies and he had no teeth and he was all scarred up. And he said to me, I've been committed here too and I'm your new cellmate. And I started screaming uncontrollably and woke myself up covered in sweat. Well, Linda... I've just spoken to your neighbours. That weren't a dream, love. No, you see, the men in white, they came by last night. It had to be done. Long overdue. Sorry, Linda. Anyway, moving swiftly on. So, next one is from Gemma in Hull. Now, Gemma says... I dreamt I was in Dubai and I was trying out some new robots... But for some reason, they were all Irish grannies offering endless cups of tea. Well, Gemma, sounds like you've been watching a bit too much Black Mirror. Or maybe, hang on, what's that, God? Oh, he says you've been watching too much Father Ted's. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe you just need a good cup of tea. When was the last time you had a good cup of tea? Go on, get out there and make one. And while you're at it, no milk, two sugars. Thanks, love. Um, what else we got? Let's have a butcher's. Now, this one's from Sharon in Canvey Island. Sharon says, I went to an opera in my dream, but the singers was all cats. One cat in particular was singing a beautiful Ave Maria. Then they did a rendition of Puccini's Madame Butterfly. Well, Sharon. Mother Superior would approve of Ave Maria, but it doesn't really need to be said, does it? You've turned into a crazy cat lady, Sharon. Yes. It ain't healthy, love. You've got to get out. You've got to get alive. Yeah. Can't spend all day just 
with your pussies. No. Right, let's see what else we got. Um, now, this one's from Terry in Swanage. Now, Terry says, I dreamt I was the ghost of Jill Dando and I kept haunting Greg's pastry shops on the ice street. Terry. I think it's time to tell your wife you've got an unhealthy interest in a TV presenter who died 20 years ago, Terry. Yeah. And also, love, lay off them sausage rolls because not even the ghost of Jill Dando would have you with a muffin top like that. Yeah. Right, I think that's all we got time for this week. Tune in next week for more of your dreams and keep them coming thick and fast. Yeah, right. So, sweet dreams, and I'll see you next time. Oh, the hysteria for Mother Posteria, otherwise known as Maria Maz. Thank you so much, Maria, and we look forward to seeing more of your eccentric characters in future shows. Okay, now this lovely lady, a wonderful musician, I have to say, we go back a long time ago to the days of Showtime at the old Colony Room Club on Dean Street. And I must, before I introduce her, uh, Pedro de la Hedro, no, her lovely husband, I'd like to wish a very belated happy birthday from all of us at Celine Salon. Now, Claire Nicholson has given us a lovely cover of Dreams by Meat, Meatwood. Sorry, Fleetwood Mac. See, I told you that run would kick in. <laughs> now here you go again, you say you want your freedom. Well, who am I to keep you down? It's only right that you should play the way you feel it Listen carefully to the sound of the loneliness As a heartbeat drives you mad In the stillness of remembering what you had And what you lost And what you had
Thank you, Claire. And yes, that was Fleetwood, not Meatwood. Fleetwood, mate, not Meatwood. All right, mate. Mm, get in there, Moss. <sighs> right. It sounds like so I'm going through a lot of these performers tonight, and we've all got a bit of history. Here's another bit of history Barney Ashton Bullock, brilliant poet. Hi, Celine. Um, it's lovely to be able to read for you on this uh, online version of Celine's Salon. I'm going to read two of the very short pieces from my recent uh, poetry pamphlet, Café Kaput, that came out uh, with Broken Sleep Books uh, earlier last year. Um, the first poem is called And Liked It. The plasterboard and base blue asbestos panels beneath are sodden to a stout porridge and listing with their murky, sewage-infested, polluted moistness and thirsty me scrunches a fistful of the pomp and gulps at the quenching drippage. I know the taste. I bit asbestos tiles as a kid and liked it. The second work is called Men. Men as lovers were never friends. They were warmth and noise and provision and demand. Their suit behaviour as if an erasure of the private world they lived in fleetingly with me while separated by degrees from their truer nature. Thank you, Celine. All the best. Go, 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 Barney. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you in the very near future. Now, a few months ago, on Celine's Salon radio show, that's right, we also have a show on Soho Radio, which can be found at www.sohoradiolondon.com. And we are in the culture part of their show once a month on a Wednesday. Um, if you go through the schedule, you will find us. Um, it's different dates in the month, but you'll see also an archive of all of our shows. And do have a listen because we've had some fantastic uh, guests in the past. But we had the pleasure of um, platforming this lovely lady's book, The Really Resilient Guide. Her name is Andre Anastasis McFarlane, and here's her piece for dreams. Hi guys, Andrew here from The Learning Moment. Thanks for this really great theme, Celine, of dreams and really looking forward to your YouTube channel. So I was thinking the thing about dreams that keeps me really motivated at work is the dream that I have that people really would get to do work that they love, work that helps them to feel really fulfilled, that's really enjoyable with colleagues that they get on with, that they get well paid for, that leaves them feeling like they've put some energy in, but not that they're burnt out, but, you know, just the right amount of energy. Um, work where people can learn. I'd love that dream would be amazing. People learning together, enjoying their work, doing projects that are really fulfilling. Jobs that people feel that it's like, yeah, we've got to get out of bed for work to get paid, but I'm looking forward to it. It's something good. That would be my dream. That's what keeps me motivated doing my work, that I can experience that and that hopefully other people get to experience that as well. That's it for now. Bye. Andre, thank you for your lovely words. And yes, you can find our show on Mixcloud, Celine Salon, Soho Radio. Please check us out. It's worth a listen. Yes. Even further, further, further back into the archives of Celine and her writing history, I was very privileged to meet this lovely lady, Amina Jindani, at the Royal Court Young Writers Group many moons ago. And um, yeah, she's a, a lovely, lovely lady who is a playwright, a poet, 
Uh, she does lots of things and she's based in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And we are really looking forward to one day in the not so near future getting Celine Salon over to Malaysia. And we're really lucky that she submitted this wonderful piece called The Knock Knock Ritual. Knock, knock. Am I dreaming? No. Rituals to keep for recalling during sleep. Knock, knock. knock, 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 knock. The exercise book chapters read how to unlock types of awareness. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. knock, knock. Am, I Am I lucid? Am I lucid? I forgot. Alpha, theta, delta, now. It's been years since I learned how and so unaware that I am able, able to, glide to glide beyond, beyond, the, beyond mirror. the mirror. Yet I'm often unconcerned. Deep beyond my wit, beyond lifting, beyond lifting beyond reality beyond from beyond fable, beyond my vague awareness beyond becomes beyond thinner. Beyond I abscond through gossamer. gossamer. Knock, 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 knock. Are, are you there? there? I don't, I, don't think think so. I don't think so yet. Knock, knock, am I dreaming? I don't, I don't think, think I, am. I am. And that's the state of it. It's quite infuriating. This is not dreaming. This is divergent. Unalike inadvertedness or lucidity. I'm in Ringo's bathtub and the bubbles are moons knocking on giant seashells shimmery as whales on crooked floating floorboards I knock knock as I will myself wings knowing that I dream I forgot after 27 years Amina, thank you so much. And again, we look forward to seeing more of your work and other Malaysian writers in the very, very near future. Now we come to the end of the show. <laughs> but there's going to be more. So as I said, please find us at Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Celine Salon. Um, this lady has been part of the furniture from day one. She is a brilliant author and her name is Lucy Tertia George, and she's reading her piece from her novel, Three Women. Most mornings, Veronica would lie on her bed, listening to the record and daydreaming about Alan. She could waste away hours like this, smiling to herself as the music washed over so familiar now that she barely heard it. She imagined what it would be like when they lived together. She reran conversations they'd had and invented conversations they might have when she saw him next. She remembered what it felt like to be with him in her little flat. She liked the weight of him on her, pressing down so she felt breathless. She liked once their frantic need for each other was satisfied that he would lie squashed between her and the cold wall, recklessly free of sheets and blankets, which always ended up in a puddle at the end of the bed. Both boldly naked, shameless. He would draw his finger along her arm and down her hip, as if he was tracing her outline, making a copy for himself to take away when he left the flat and returned to his other life. Being with Alan felt like being welcomed into a world that she'd always imagined, but before now had no idea how to get to. He'd sit talking about what was really going on in a play or a film, how he saw something beyond the initial story, how the characters resonated in ways that most of the audience didn't see. He was an insider, an artist, and by association, she was now too. She was different from the people she'd grown up with, rescued from the path they all trod, 
that only went from school to work, from being a good girl to being a good wife, from duty to responsibility. With Alan, work didn't have to be about earning money. It could be about self-expression. The work of an artist could mean something. She knew that she was faking it somewhat during her conversations with him, that she wasn't so far away from the people that she'd been at school with, who shrugged off Shakespeare as boring and scoffed at the idea of classical music or wouldn't dream of paying to see a film with subtitles. But even faking it was better than being the young woman she would have been if she hadn't been able to sing. There was no explanation for why Veronica could sing so well. People called it a gift, and often it felt like one to Veronica, surprising, maybe something she didn't really deserve. She could sing, and others in her school, in her neighborhood, in her family couldn't. She'd been told for years that her voice was special. Knowing that made her ambitious. Once someone, then another, then many people, told Veronica that her voice could take her places. She had allowed herself the pleasure of imagining those places. Where would she go? When? It hardly mattered as long as it wasn't here with these people and their small lives. Alan loved her voice, but he also loved her body. Veronica thought he might even love her too. Thank you, Lucy, Tasha, George. And you can buy Three Women on Amazon. It's a bloody good read. Oh, no. Oh, no. That brings us to the end of our first Celine Salon YouTube show. I want to say a very big thank you to all of our writers. We've had one voice, one cello and a mad Belgian. We've had Aidan Cassily, Sebastian and the Dream. We've had Tom McCall, Mother Posterior. Andre Anastasis McFarlane, Claire Nicholson, Barney Ashton Bullock, Amina Jindani, and again, Lucy Tertia George. So remember, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Celine Salon. You can find us on Soho Radio, www.sohoradiolondon.com, on Mixcloud, Celine Salon, Soho Radio. All we ask for you is to share, share what we've done tonight and subscribe and like and please add as many comments. Thank you so much and we will see you very, very soon. Shifting your paradigm, shifting your paradigm. The lady on the scene, Celine Salon. The Salon de Celine, the lady on the scene. I mean, the lady on the scene, Celine Salon, Celine Salon, Celine Salon, Celine Salon, Celine Salon, the lady on the scene.